Now, President Cyril Ramaphosa has revealed government's latest timelines in the years-long delayed digital migration project, saying implementation will kick off next month. Although South Africa committed to the International Telecommunication Union's call for all nations to switch to DTT, the country missed the June 2015 deadline to complete the full switchover. The ITU has called on nations to migrate to digital to allow radio frequency spectrum to be freed up for mobile broadband services. To speak more about this, the Minister of Telecommunications and Personal Services, Stella Ndabini Abrams. Minister, very good evening to you. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us. Thank you so much and good evening to you and the viewers in their respective areas. So we understand that the Free State will be the first province to kick this off. But I just want to find out from you, have you fixed some of the teething problems? Because we know that Many residents there had complained about poor signal from the newly installed decoders. Are you confident that these won't persist? Well, I'm confident about the fact that we've put a plan in place, uh, which is what I can say the teams that are dedicated in, in doing that. They are working day and night to ensure that it happens. We have brought on board Centec, which is our signal distributor, which has experience also in the installation that we're talking about. Therefore, they are the ones that are project managing the installations, including quality checking the signal that must be available to all those that must have access to it. Mm -hmm. We have established a PMO. Of course, you are correct to say there's lots of teething problems but amongst those was the fact that we still needed to make sure that the beneficiaries are the correct beneficiaries but on top of that they also own tv sets because we've been to other households where we because the registration was done some time ago and these are the things that we then said that Let's focus on that because by the time the beneficiaries were registered, they had TVs. And now you find that some of them no longer have those TV sets. And you find that as government, we have to pop in money and make sure that we pay for those TV sets. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing is to make sure that we, everything is verified in terms of the beneficiary list. We engage the manufacturers of the devices to make sure that they provide quality as, as they expect expected okay. to do. But on top of that, as I said, Centec provides the quality check. We'll talk about quality assurance in just a moment, Minister, but uh, the Portfolio Committee on Communications at some point raised concerns over the fact that what they said was there in about 4.7 million qualifying households um, that only half of a million have been connected to the digital decoders. Now, have you overcome this challenge and exactly how many uh, households would need to be connected? Well, if you recall, we have about, as, as you correctly put it, we have about 5 million households that needs to be connected during the time SSA and, SSA and, and, and SASA did the, 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 the verification. As I said earlier, we need to verify that those households, their income is not improved yet, so that in the process we can also save government. Because the fact that they qualified 15 years back, it doesn't mean that they still qualify. That's the first thing. But the second thing Ed, that you are talking to that is very important is that how do we then make sure that those that have been procured, because government has procured about 1.5 million devices that have been stored in the post office and correctly so as we are saying about half a million it was seven hundred thousand at some point last year and the report that we have now as we had about eight hundred thousand that was installed that was left in the post offices as i'm speaking to you the report from october to now where that minister we have managed to install about three hundred thousand plus and we are certain that by by march and uh, end of March this year, we will have finished the remaining, which is about 400,000 plus that needs to be finished. That's on the 1.5 that was per child. Okay. Just in terms of people who qualify, you say that people who don't have IDTVs or satellite dishes are expected to get the set-top boxes. But now what happens if people can't afford them? As you say, that you don't know if circumstances have changed. So are you still willing to subsidize them via vouchers? Government is continuing to subsidize the commitment that we have made that let's look for funding and subsidize those that are in need, which is why the Treasury already, as I'm speaking to you, had allocated about 1.6 billion to make sure that we, the, pro, the project kicks start. And we are continuously uh, engaging with the manufacturers where they can in terms of the discounts, because we are bringing a large sum of market 
that was not there prior to say, please be considerate, even for the installation prices, be considerate even on the price of the boxes to say we all need this to be done. You're also not doing anything in, in the process because, as I said, some of them have, have not been working because the project had stalled. But now they are beginning to have an appreciation that this is a critical project and it also helps them to generate more okay. money because it is more numbers. And as I say that, the numbers that I'm talking about, because we're only focusing on the subsidized market, which is a completely wrong uh, uh, point of view, because every board in South Africa that has a TV, and as you put it, if you do not have an ID TV set or you do not have a decoder, you need to migrate. So the focus is not only on the subsidized market, but we're looking at all the households that are there, but government is mm. intervening from the households that, that are in need, which is why cabinet gave us a go ahead to say, let's go and seek for alternative funding right. in order to make sure that those that are, are, are deserving, they get the, the assistance that they get from government. Now, Minister, I, I hope that we will invite you again to further discuss this matter because I think there are important nitty gritties to discuss. But I want to... Uh, just a segue into another point of view which revolves the SABC. Now, Centec has said that digital migration, the process, will go a long way in reducing costs for the SABC. So given this, is this perhaps part of the reason why you've been discouraging the broadcaster against retrenchments? Have, have I discouraged the board because of that, according to your information? No, I'm asking a question. If uh, it means that it will benefit the SABC, digital migration, by reducing costs, is this perhaps part of the reason why you've been discouraging the broadcast against retrenchments? You've been on record well, saying that. Well, the important thing is that when we discourage anyone from retrenching because they again become a, a burden to the fiscal and all we understand is that when people have lost jobs it means the state again must pop up funds for the education of their children for the health services for for whoever that must have access but now all we did as the department and the department of labor is to say please make sure that you have explored all avenues before you send people away at the center of this is this opportunity that you are aware of that once we, we, we first track the process of digital migration, SABC stands to increase the channels. And as you are aware from SABC, that we are talking about 16 mm. channels. And therefore, it tells you that there may be talent that you're going to need when those channels are yeah. opened. But what's important is to say, currently, SABC cannot afford certain things. Mm. What's the DTT strategy for SABC to make sure that those channels are there? Has the content been secured and how is it planning to secure those? And also, how do we deal with the staff optimization process in the steps that we're put? Mm. And, and this is the stance that we're taking and, as, and, as, and as government. As you say, it is undesirable. Just as a final question, having said that, you've also said heads should roll if proper procedure is not followed with regards to the Section 1H process, something that's been constantly alleged by unions. Where do you stand on this, given that the horse has bolted? Do you still believe that? I'm still waiting for a report from the SABC board. As our last communication indicated that we have sent a letter to the SABC board indicating of the proposals, what we are putting in place, and therefore we are waiting them to respond. So as yet, I have nothing to say because I've not officially received any response from mm. the SABC board. But do you still stand by that uh, position that heads should roll? Should it be fine? I have never said... I You've been quoted on the 2nd of February so. as having said that, Minister, and we can, I can even read the text of what you said. The question I ask is, do you still stand by that? My darling, as you say, whatever that you have quoted, I'm telling you right now here, without you reading something that I don't know where to do, read it from. I've mm. never said heads with all. All we said, we've got to make sure that we all play our part, follow all the processes that need to be followed. I cannot come in and say uh, heads will roll. I do not have that authority as the Minister of Communications and Digital Technologies. As you know, if we are talking about heads must roll, board is appointed by parliament, not by minister. The executives are appointed by the board. Therefore, I cannot come at any stage and say heads must roll when things do not go. And as I said, even in my prior communication, we are advising, because that's how far we can go according to the constitution of this country and the powers that as the, as the minister we have. We can only advise the SABC board. It is up to the SABC board to take the advice or not, but our commitment is to ensure that we don't just let people to go home without ensuring right. that processes have been followed and also people are given the necessary skills in order, because any a, a party that 
chooses to retrench people, it also has a responsibility of making sure that you are upskilling those people and providing certain things as per the Labour Department has explained also to the SABC. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Minister of Telecommunications and Postal Services, Stella Ndabini Abrahams.